see the quarter. Thank you very much. Well, as Paul says, today is April the 9th, which is the 119th anniversary of our first ever major triumph when we beat Queen's Park in the final at Ibrox by five <coughs> goals to one. Two of the goals scored by Sandy McMahon. And if you read the account in the Scotsman newspaper, it might just imply that he scored three, but the balance of evidence was that he only scored the two. <laughs> but Sandy McMahon scored two of these goals. So glory be to the men of Cullen, Reynolds and Doyle, Gallagher, Kelly and Mealy, Campbell, Dowds, McCallum, McMahon and Brady. And can we ever really begin to imagine just what that triumph did to our supporters? Not until 1967, when the team came back with a bigger and even more prestigious trophy, did the East End of Glasgow see a night like that. And in 1967, at least, the welfare state had begun to kick in. But in 1892, there was nothing other than grim unrelenting poverty made all the worse in a climate of ignorance and hatred. As the Irish community suffered the worst excesses of the Victorian capitalist system. Sandy scored two goals as we say in 1892. One was a gloriously headed goal where he rose like a bird as the newspaper said, the head home a corner kick. And the other one is described brilliantly, graphically, but rather bizarrely by Willie Mealy as Sandy indulging in one of those mazy runs. Head down, arms outstretched. <laughs> Simply walked through the amateur's defence to register the third goal. Sandy would win a total of three Scottish Cup medals, four Scottish League medals, three Glasgow Cup medals, four Glasgow Charity Cup medals, six Scotland caps, eight Scottish League caps. But that is only half the story. He was a personality goal scorer. He was a hero for people who really needed a hero. And he started the long tradition of Celtic goal scoring heroes like Jimmy Quinn, Jimmy McGrory, Joe Cassidy, Dixie Deans, Bobby Lennox, Steve Chalmers, Henrik Larsson, and many, many others. Sandy was the first. And let's hear what Willie Mealy said about him elsewhere. He was a marvelous header of a ball. He was tall, almost ungainly in appearance. He had great footwork, a deceptive swerve, judgment marvelous of the flight of the ball. The only negative thing that Mealy says about him is that of speed he had little. But mind you, if you score 171 goals <laughs> at 217 games, do you really need speed? A little wonder that he earned names like the Duke and the Prince of Dribblers. You don't earn these names for nothing. And how sad it is that DVDs and videos weren't around in the 1890s. But children can always tell what their forefathers saw. And my grandfather died in 1950. I was only two year old at the time, didn't really know him. But apparently <laughs> went to his grave raving about the greatness of Sandy McMahon. <laughs> Off the field, he was an intelligent, well-read man who could recite his Burns and his Shakespeare. And pictures of him tend to indicate a kind, gentle, loving man, sometimes with a stash, sometimes not, of whom anyone could be proud. He married Annie Devine in 1896, his best man being his outside left partner, Johnny Campbell, who was a partner on the field and off the field, therefore. Sadly, Annie died in 1908, and Sandy, after suffering from years of nephritis, which is a chronic kidney complaint, died on the 25th of January 1916, Burns Night, uh, appropriately, a happening which even in the dreadful years of the Great War caused distress the Celtic supporters everywhere. And that is hardly surprising, ladies and gentlemen, for Sandy McMahon was one of the greatest of them all. Very well, sir.